plot is to also see how many people are really interested. Because they are the ones who will come on time and at 9 o'clock. Actually, this uh, uh, is just starting of a series of talks which uh, we have been talking about so that everybody can do his own uh, research or at least analysis of data which he has got. And there are a uh, lot of people with a lot of data but they don't know how to handle it, how to analyze it. I realized because uh, I think in 1999 or 90, we published a small letter to the editor in a good journey in which we reported how many patients with cystic psychosis or I shouldn't say cystic psychosis with a lesion in the brain and seizures, a single ring enhancing lesion had positive serology for cystic psychosis and how many has negative. So we just uh, had the numbers and percentages in that publication. You may check it, uh, which is in Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery, Psychiatry. When I went to Canada and looked at the same data, I thought I should have done it differently because I didn't know what to do with the data, so I could not deal with it properly. What I should have seen is what is the proportion, not only percentages, but what is the ratio, and whether this ratio is really different from one. So. Uh, People call it odds ratio, we will come to that sometime later, but <coughs> I think I hadn't heard of the word odds ratio. And uh, then I should have given p value, which we did give, because I'm not sure whether I had heard of p value even at that time. So I was uh, assistant professor in Ames, New Delhi for at least three years by that time. So we, everybody realized that actually knowledge of research methods is very poor. Uh, way back in 1985-86 uh, in Ames, New York. So they decided to send people for learning these methods and come back and form a group and teach people in our faculty how to do uh, research and how to do analysis of your data. So we used to, uh, actually, at least seven, eight people went from Ames, New Delhi. I was one of them. And uh, when we came back, we started course, courses, I should say, which used to be three courses every year. One was called uh, How to Do Critical Appraisal of uh, Medical Literature. So that was a series. The second we used to do was designing uh, your research or thesis, because it was also for residents, so it was designing research or thesis. And third was data analysis. So three courses, each one, five days, we used to do. And uh, we thought uh, that was not adequate because we had spent one, and, uh, one year and three months to learn the same things at several places in North America and, and in Australian center. So even 15 days we didn't think was good enough. But uh, we were certainly doing something to stimulate people so that some of them will take up this uh, idea on their own and take it forward. So I was surprised that uh, in a conference call about COVID, uh, there was a person from WHO who uh, said that those who are, we, they were discussing about neurological manifestations of COVID and uh, he said uh, those who want to join, 
please join our such and such. This was way back in June 2020. So I joined and then uh, the head of the brain health unit in WHO, during introduction, to my surprise, he said, Dr. Prasad may not remember, but I have been a uh, student and he has taught research methodology to us. So I was, I of course didn't remember because there are so many people who attended this. So I said, I'm not, I don't remember exactly, but surely we must have uh, done something so that you remember that we have uh, taught you. So people do remember even if you do five days course. Now this will be a series, so it will be more than five days. Uh, and will depend on the interest of the people. Uh, we purposefully will keep it at nine o'clock so that only those who are interested, they come. Right? And we don't want to uh, do it uh, in the evening. We want people with fresh mind. So one example of this is what I am going to present to you today. Though it will be much better if I did on the board because you may be thinking board is outdated. But uh, there is a workshop in, if you go to site of Oxford, Center for Evidence-Based Medicine, that is how to teach. And how to teach is basically done on black or white board. Same thing, uh, that is every year. So if you go there, you will not be using any slide. You will be learning how to teach and teaching on board. Similarly, in McMaster University, they hold a workshop teaching evidence-based practice every year. And it is done on board. Use of slides is not encouraged. Very clear. And they think various ways in which you can enhance the learning experience of learners. And uh, it is through more through interaction and on the board and role play and so on, not necessarily using the slides. But I am going to use it today only because there is no board. And I have asked Dr. Bhattacharya that we better put a board. There should be a long board so that everybody can uh, see and uh, we can use the different parts of this. So I am going to give you a very different method of doing sample size calculation. And why do we do sample size calculation? Because you have to write a budget. You have to write a budget for your grant. So, how do you write the budget? You must know how many people we need. So, sometimes uh, people will give you idea that for every single patient you will need so many rupees. But uh, you need to know how many uh, patients I need in my study. So, to know that it is uh, necessary that you have a number. Now that number is a ballpark figure. It may be uh, more than enough or it may be less than enough. And you may have heard a lot of trials get stopped in between because before they reach the full sample size, they find such a huge effect that they think it is unethical to keep denying this medicine to 50% of people if there is uh, one is to one randomization. So they stop this in the middle of the trial, a lot of studies you will read. They did interim analysis, one or two, they found such a huge effect that they stopped. So the, then you, you may ask, what is the point of calculating? Because they had to plan it. You need number for planning, that is one. Secondly, uh, most of my residents, when they joined neurology in Ames, New Delhi, they had to write some uh, thesis proposal. They will come with brilliant proposal, something which nobody has done, but it is not feasible because they are there for only three years. In three years, if you count the number of patients, you are not going to get enough. So how do you know it is feasible? So even before you start your research, you need to do some, what is called back of envelope calculation of samples. And I remember that it is so difficult to and uh, uh, Dr. Singh may not agree with me. So difficult to get a statistician to do a sample side calculation that you will feel disheartened at times, right? 